going on guys and welcome into machine heads from compactequipment.com look if you love construction equipment and you love talking about construction equipment then you're in the right place we don't just talk horsepower or basic specs here on machine heads we detail the why and the how behind the features and improvements that is pushing the latest compact equipment forward and i'm your host wayne grayson so today on Machine Heads, we're going to be welcoming in a special guest to talk about drum mulchers, and that is Trig Waterhouse, the director of sales at Lofness. Now, Lofness is known for its battle axe line of drum mulchers, and in our chat with Trig, we discuss not only everything you need to know about the attachment, but everything you need to know when it comes to choosing the right one for your application. Now, our chat includes, you know, why the drum mulcher has become the most popular tool uh, for land clearing applications, the differences in design of these mulchers, uh, your teeth options, and a lot more. But we also talk specifically about the Loftness Battle Axe lineup of drum mulchers and what the unique design features, such as Loftness's depth gauge and its two-stage cutting chamber, that Loftness brings to the table when it comes to these beastly land clearing attachments. All right, so let's get into it. Here's our chat with Trig Waterhouse of Loftness. Trig Waterhouse, thank you so much for, for joining us today. Trig, you're the, the director of sales at Loftness. Uh, we have a lot to talk about when it comes to uh, drum mulchers and Loftness with that that very wide variety that the Battle Axe line offers. Thank you so much for joining us, man. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. Thanks, Wayne. Appreciate it. Yeah, looking forward to, to uh, talking all things drum mulchers. Absolutely. Well, uh, to start off, let's let's talk a little bit about the drum mulcher uh, as a category in general. Um, these have become uh, extremely popular attachments um, with the uh, kind of growing popularity of uh, the compact loader in general, um, not just the skid steer, but but obviously the, the compact track loader. Um, so, you know, what is it about the drum mulcher that has made it basically the centerpiece um, of any kind of like mulching uh, operators kind of, uh, kind of array of tools. What, what is it about that attachment? Yeah. The real key to the popularity in the drum mulcher is its versatility. It's, uh, it's really kind of a one-stop shop do all machine. There's a variety of different styles of mulchers out there, but the drum mulcher is the one tool that you can count on to really do just what anything you need, uh, in the realm of mulching. So you can go, fast uh some guys will call it blow and go where the objective is just get this stuff on the ground um get it cut up real rough and move on um, and then there's applications where people want a much finer finish they want to cut that material up a lot smaller the drum mulcher has options to do that by just simply reprocessing where you're driving over that material over again and so you can do it all in one shot um, it's safe uh safer than other mulching uh, uh types of machines because it directs all of your, your debris directly down into the ground. So if you're in an area, you know, uh, where there might be livestock or other people, you know, densely populated areas, it's significantly safer for those areas. So it really kind of combines all of those things into one, uh, into one package and you can just do so much with it, which really is the heart of its popularity. And, you know, for, for those who are kind of looking at the drum mulcher as a potential addition to their, to their kind of, uh, equipment, um, what, what sort of things can they tackle? Uh, what, what kind of, uh, a, a range of, I guess, terrain or, or kind of, uh, brush can they, can they hit with, with one of these tools? Yeah, that's a great question. They are surprisingly capable. If you look at, uh, the range of vegetation that they can tackle, they can really go through anything from basic br grass, light brush, all the way up to trees as big around as is 10, in some cases, even slightly larger than 10 inch diameter. So they can knock down trees, they can chew those up, they can cut down brush, they can cut that up, and basically anywhere in between. The only real variable in all that is, is how fast they can go. Um, it would be really the biggest, the biggest consideration in determining whether or not the drum mulcher is the, is the, is the right tool for your application. But in terms of what you can do with it, it really does everything from small grass type, type vegetation all the way up to, to pretty good sized trees. Yeah. So, um, it, it sounds kind of like, you know, no matter if you're, if you're coming at this from somebody who's going to be doing land clearing part-time, uh, maybe 20 or 30% of their time, or maybe it's something that you're looking kind of diversify your business a little bit, go into a land clearing operation. It, it really sounds like the drum mulcher would feature very prominently allowing you to do just about anything, uh, you would want to do is, is that how you'd characterize it? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Uh, between the different sizes of drum mulchers available, um, and the different, uh, you know, styles in terms of what kinds of carrier or what kind of machine it can go on. 
yeah, it, there's a drum mulcher available to do just what anything that you need, anything that you want, depending on the production rate you're looking for, the type of terrain you're looking to be able to cover, um, or the, really the duty cycle, like you said, or is this something you're looking to use, you know, just occasionally or something you're looking to use every day, um, for long periods of the day, there's, there's a, there's a machine available, uh, within all of those ranges. Yeah. And, and, and you mentioned earlier, kind of like the, the, the thing that really kind of segregates or kind of delineates the, the lineup, uh, that you guys have at Loftness and, and really kind of the major attachment, uh, the centerpiece of you guys lineup is the, is the battle axe drum mulcher. Um, take us through, uh, you know, the, you know, what kind of makes these different, uh, models of, of battle axe, uh, what kind of separates these and, uh, the, the types of options, uh, and, uh, and, and, and how to mate these machine, you know, these, uh, these attachments, uh, to a machine. Cause it, it sounds like, you know, kind of looking at it, it's really, it's all dependent upon the, the, the machine that you have and, and really, uh, the amount of hydraulic flow that you're going to be able to send to this attachment. Take us through the battle axe lineup. Yeah, you bet. So for the battle axe lineup to start with, we want to uh, talk about what kind of machine are we going to be attaching this to? And there's really three primary categories there. Um, kind of the bread and butter um, is the skid steer attachment. That's where you see tons and tons of drum mulchers being used as on skid steers or, or compact track loaders, essentially. Um, and there's a variety of sizes within that. So you've got basically more or less two standard sizes. You've got, at least for loftness, um, you've got the light and then you've got the standard. And so the light is going to be paired with more like a 50 to 70 horsepower machine. Um, and then the standard is going to be a little bigger, more like a 90 to 130 horsepower machine. And that's kind of your bread and butter for, for, uh, compact track loader, uh, machines. Then you've got the excavator series. Excavator series goes on excavators. Um, and those are going to be used more for places where, um, you really want that extended reach. Maybe the terrain is uneven. Um, clearing road right of ways is really common where the excavator can drive along the, you know, the shoulder. Uh, or up on the bank of the right away, but be able to reach out into conditions that they might be swampy, they might be really, really steep, something, some place that would be unsafe uh, to run a track loader. Or you might you want to use it in an area where you want to be able to specifically reach uh, up high or over or around something where the reach of that excavator is going to be um, a, a, a key feature of, of how you're trying to mulch. And then we have a tractor, a PTO-driven tractor version, and this would be for someone who likely already has a tractor, they want that tractor for other applications, they want to be able to just add a mulcher to it um, to handle their mulching needs as well. So those are kind of the three primary families uh, of mulchers in terms of what they attach to and then how you're going to go about using those. And then within that, um, there's a few sizes to be sized accordingly for the machine. Yeah, absolutely. And, and how do um, how do tooth types uh, play play into your options uh, on loft nest drum mulchers? Yeah, that's a really important question. So there's really three kind of primary tooth types, and there's a few subtypes within that, but we'll just kind of cover the three primary types. So first of all, uh, there's a tooth called the carbide tooth, and the carbide tooth is a, a very durable, very capable kind of general do-all type tooth. And the big advantage of the carbide tooth is that it's really, really hard. And so it's very resistant to uh, wearing or breaking or getting dull. And so really the key application there is going to be places where there might be some rock, uh, potential rock contact on the ground. The ground might be really uneven, so you're going to get a lot more ground contact. Um, and so those carbide teeth are just really resistant to that. Now, they process the material in a very rough way. They kind of rip and tear, and they basically just shred the material very roughly. But like I said, they stay, uh, they, they just last a long time. You don't have to do any maintenance on those teeth for, for quite a long time. Then the next uh, tooth type is going to be uh, a sharpened uh, hardened steel tooth. This is going to be more like a chainsaw blade where it's, it needs to be sharp. It's going to cut, cut the wood a lot more precisely. It's going to make nice, clean, shaved uh, wood chips. Uh, the production rate is going to be a lot faster because it's sharper. Uh, you'll get a nice, finer finish. The downside is if you are in an area where there's going to be a lot of ground contact or rock contact, those teeth are going to get dull really fast. As they get dull, your cutting rate is going to go down uh, quite a bit. You'll notice it right away and you'll have to go, you know, do some maintenance on those teeth in order to, to sharpen them. And there is a third kind of a hybrid of those two um, where it actually uses kind of a layered approach, some carbide and some hardened steel. Um, and what that hybrid tooth does is in areas where there's some ground contact, not necessarily rocks and heart, but, but 
you know, sand or, or, or just general hard ground, the tooth is going to wear in a way that still maintains some sharpness. So it's kind of a blend of both. You still get a good, uh, reasonable production rate. It's not as fast as a sharpened metal tooth, um, but it has some good wear characteristics, not as good a wear as the, as the, uh, the carbide, but kind of somewhere in between. So it's a good middle of the road tooth design for places where there might be sandy ground, loamy ground, and there's going to be some ground contact, but not a lot of rocks. Then that hybrid's a good option for that. But between kind of um, the you know the size of the of the mulcher and really I guess the uh, the amount of power and the speed that it can operate at and these tooth types, how would you characterize kind of like what what the most popular combination of these things that you guys are seeing uh, go into the market right now? Yeah, I think right now in terms of skid steers, you know, skid steers are what I what I what I think we commonly see the most of, and there's certainly a lot of excavators out there too, but it's just a lot harder for me to categorize that. But skid steers. We just see a ton in that uh, kind of 75 horsepower range and 95 horsepower range for compact track loaders. Um, and one thing to be careful of is that, that that horsepower designation is usually referring to engine horsepower, but what we really care about is the hydraulic horsepower. And not right. every machine is, is created equal in that regard. Um, some machines provide more hydraulic horsepower to the attachment. Um, but that kind of that range, that 75 horsepower range and that 95 horsepower range, uh, seem to be really, really common, really popular. Um, and, and you're going to typically pair our, you know, battle axe light with the, with the smaller version of that and the battle axe standard, uh, with the larger version. And those are just two really common kind of wheelhouse drum mulchers for us. And what about tooth types? I mean, does it really kind of depend on the region of the contractor for, for stuff like that, or, uh, yeah. or maybe even kind of like the rate of use that they're, they're putting the attachment in? Yeah, for sure. I mean, Regionally is definitely one of the biggest differentiators. I would say overall, the carbide tooth is by far the most popular because of its versatility. It's just one of those things that um, you kind of just buy it and you sort of set it and forget it. You can count right. on the fact that you can use it day in, day out, and not really have to worry about it a whole lot. There's a few places regionally where um, contractors have enough specific known work in a known geography where they know exactly what the conditions are and what to expect, um, where they're going to specifically want those sharpened teeth because they can go so much faster and get a better finish. Um, but for the most part, it's just really become common to want that, uh, some version of that carbide tooth. So you just don't have to worry about it. You know, they're going to last really long and you really don't have to do any maintenance on it. People just don't want to do maintenance unless they absolutely have to. Well, uh, Trig, you know, as, as we're kind of near and here to the end of the, of the conversation, I do want to talk about, we talked about it a little bit earlier, uh, with kind of how the, the battle axe lineup kind of breaks down ar around machine mating. But, you know, what are, what are some of the tips that, that you guys at Loftness or how do you kind of help customers who, who are looking to invest in a drum mulcher? Um, how do you guys make sure that they have the right attachment and that they have the right machine to, to power that attachment? What are some of the tips and things that you guys kind of take them through whenever they're about to invest in, a, in the right drum mulcher? So when it comes to <laughs> picking the right mulching head to pair with the right carrier or power head or machine that you're going to put it on, really the key to, to consider is hydraulic horsepower. Um, hydraulic horsepower is a function of hydraulic flow rate and hydraulic pressure. And each machine is going to have those specs readily available. And so the key uh, is to work with a reputable dealer uh, who knows how to uh, size the machine with the mulching head. So it's really difficult to, to uh, quantify that exactly in terms of numbers because each, uh, each machine has a slightly different way uh, that it, that it, uh, provides that information. So one machine, uh, one track loader might have slightly higher hydraulic pressure and slightly lower flow. Uh, another one might have slightly higher flow and slightly lower hydraulic pressure. At the end of the day, there's a calculation that we use to, to, to get to hydraulic horsepower. And a, a good dealer is going to be able to do that calculation for you based on the specs in the machine, determine what the hydraulic horsepower is, and then tell you based on this hydraulic horsepower, of this machine, this is the best fit mulcher for it, or vice versa. You might start with a mulcher and say, for this mulcher, you need a machine that does a minimum of this amount of hydraulic horsepower. Um, and that's really how we size it, whether it's going on an excavator 
or whether it's going on a skid steer, either way, it really comes down to that, that hydraulic horsepower calculation. Um, and so hopefully that's, hopefully that answers that question it, again, kind of to summarize, it really comes down to working with a dealer that knows how to do that calculation for you and then determine which machine, which carrier has the ability to provide the hydraulic horsepower for that head. Yeah. Just, a, just another example of why those dealer relationships are, are hugely important, uh, especially yeah. when it comes time to, to make an investment. Um, and, and Trig, we'll, we'll kind of finish up here. Uh, we were, we were talking about maintenance earlier and, and how the carbide tooth is the, is the way to go. If that's something that you're looking, uh, at, uh, not, not having to do as much, but what are some of the other maintenance aspects when it comes to the drum mulcher and the type of maintenance that we, you'll be performing on the attachment, but also if you're going to be doing more, uh, land clearing in general, the types of maintenance that you'll be looking at, uh, doing on your, your, your compact loader, whether it's a skid steer or a CTL to kind of keep those machines in, in top performance condition. Yeah, well, on the mulcher side, you know, fortunately, maintenance is really simple on a drum mulcher. It's basically, you got two grease cirques, um, one on each end of the shaft, uh, where the shaft goes into the bearing. We want to keep that bearing well lubricated. Um, and so that's super basic and super straightforward. It's just easy access grease cirques, and that's it. Really, at the end of the day, the only other uh, key maintenance is, is those teeth. And it's really two things. It's not just maintaining the teeth to keep them sharp and keep uh, uh you know ma maintain the the performance and production rate of the machine it's also about balance that rotor is spinning at a really really high rpm and it needs to be balanced in order to do that uh, if you imagine what a rotor would that was out of balance spinning you know 1500 2000 rpms what that would look like it creates a lot of vibration and we lose a lot of efficiency well the teeth have a significant amount of weight and they provide a, uh, uh, or they contribute a pretty critical part to the balance of the of the of the rotor. So as those teeth wear, it's uh, it's important to make sure that they're wearing evenly. And if they don't wear evenly, you're going to start to notice some vibration, and then we need to address that. Um, and so, like one common thing that will happen, if you hit a really really big rock and and severely damage a tooth, we don't want to just replace that tooth we might want to replace the tooth that's exactly 180 degrees on the other side of the rotor because if we replace if we leave one rotor that's worn uh, sorry one tooth that's worn on the back side of the rotor and we replace a brand new tooth on the front side well those two teeth don't have equal weight because one of them is worn down significantly so what we'll oftentimes do is when we replace a tooth we replace them in pairs uh, that way they're both brand new they both weigh the same they don't have to be the same as every other tooth they just need to be the same as each other as they're counter uh, mounted 180 degrees apart from each other. So the key huh. is to just go by feel. Vibration is gonna be your biggest indicator. You'll be able to feel it. If you're feeling vibration, that means your rotor's out of balance. It's likely a function of your teeth being worn and you should go do an inspection, find which tooth is the most worn and replace either that one tooth if it's uh, if you can get away with it or replace that tooth plus the one on the backside uh, with it as well. And that's, that's really kind of it. Then of course, hardened, you know, sharpened teeth. We just need to keep those teeth sharp. That's a standard you know, daily, weekly, monthly kind of a, a maintenance. Uh, and that's really about it for a drum mulcher. The The rest of it is is pretty simple. There's not much to it. Okay. Awesome, Trig. Well, man, thank you so much for, for hopping on and, and talking to us a little bit about uh, drum mulchers and, and the Loftness Battle Axe lineup and, and everything. Um, is there anything else before we before we head on out that, that you want to remind uh, customers of uh, when it comes to these to these drum mulchers? Yeah, I guess the last thing I'd say, and we kind of hit on it before, is is just at the end of the day, um, there is a wide variety of machines to put these on, and it's really critical to pair it correctly. And I know we hit on that topic before, um, but if you uh, if you put the, if you put a mulcher head on a machine that's not suited for it, the performance is not going to be good, and you're not going to be happy. And conversely, if you put a mulcher head on a machine and you don't know how to tune that machine correctly. Um, there's some adjustments uh, within the hydraulic performance of a machine. It's really important to work with a dealer that knows how to do that to set you up for success. Otherwise, uh, you're not going to realize the full potential of the mulcher. You're going to lose production rate and time is money. So make sure you're working with a reputable dealer that knows mulchers, knows how to, how to, how to pair them with machines and can set you up for success. And you'll be money ahead in the long run by far. Absolutely. Trig, man. Thank you so much for, for joining us today, guys. Um, again, like Trig said, if you're, if you're looking to invest in one of these attachments, go see a dealer, consult with them, uh, before you, uh, before you make your purchase and, uh, make a, make an informed purchase as always. Uh, yep. Trig, man, thank you again. Appreciate it. Uh, have a great one, man. You bet. Thanks a lot, Wayne. Appreciate the opportunity.
All right, guys, well, that's going to wrap up today's conversation on drum mulchers here on Machine Heads from CompactEquipment.com. If you like this video, found it informative, and it helped you in any way, please do us a favor and hit that like button. And be sure to subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications. Uh, ring that bell uh, to turn on notifications so that you don't miss a video from Machine Heads in the future. And uh, if you have any suggestions or comments, be sure to leave those in the comments below. We always love hearing from you guys. Thank you again for watching. We'll see you in the next one.